What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna paint up this extremely bare Sinoceratops and give it a cool deco inspired by the 2009 Hasbro Battle Growlers Triceratops. Now this is a shot of the original trike, plus some artwork from an artist by the name of Hongli64 over on Instagram. Now his reimagining of the trike in this art style is insanely cool. And the minute I saw it, I knew I had to use his design on a repaint. So we've got a lot of work to do on this guy to really take him to the next level. So I'm going to go ahead and get him out of the box. And we're going to throw down a little rule of cool. So we'll see you there. Okay, so I wanted to give the Sinoceratops an open mouth. I think it would make it look a little bit more dynamic. So I took an X-Acto knife and I cut off the lower beak and then took my Dremel and hogged out the inside to create a cavity where I could insert this lower mouthpiece from a broken Lost World Chasmosaurus. After some cutting and some more sanding, I was able to get it to sit inside the cavity and then it was just a matter of taking some epoxy putty and blending the two parts together. With that slight detour done, now we can start to sling some paint. And I'll leave Amazon links below to all of the paints I'm using in case you want to paint along with me. So I'll be going in first with white Createx primer and I'll lay down a couple of coats of that just to give the paint something to stick to. The next color to go down is bone white and I'll be doing a dry brushing of bone white all over the horns. And I'm gonna work on the horns first because I can hand paint the head after by hand, but the effect I wanna do on the horns, I can really only do with the airbrush. And um, to get this effect, I, I like to take transparent burnt umber ink and concentrate the ink really heavily at the base of the horn so it becomes the darkest point. And then I gradually decrease pressure and then fade out as I get to the tip of the horn. This just gives it that realistic fade, kind of like something you'd see on a bowl or something. With the horns done, now I'll jump in with bloody red mixed with black and I'll start to cut in around all of the spots on the face that are gonna be red. And once all of the red is done, now I'll go back in with just bloody red without the black and I'll do a light dry brushing all over the raised areas to get all of the details to pop. Now I'm gonna jump in with goblin green and lay down the green base for the patterns along both sides of the body. Once the green is down and dried, then I'll go back in with silly putty and mask off the green patterns and then I'll lay down the primary body color. For the body color, I'm gonna use Vallejo Model Air Yousaf Brown, and I'll lay down a couple of coats of that. And once it's dry, I'll just peel away the putty and then grab the Goblin Green again and paint the lower half of the arms and legs. With all of that finally done, now we can start to lay down all of the patterns and designs and really bring this thing to life. And obviously I'm going to stray away from the deco um, on that original figure since it is sort of a little plain. So the inspiration for the patterns and designs, you know, will be sampled from the, uh, the drawing from uh, Hong Lee. Uh, but, you know, do whatever you're inspired to do. That's the great thing about the rule of cool. You know, if it looks cool to you, just go for it. So with all of the black deco done, now I'll jump in with ultramarine blue mixed with a little dark gray to just dull that blue down a tad. And I'll focus that blue color on the front part of the frill and I'll lick those stripes up, landing them in between sections of the horns. And then I'll jump back in with black and I'm gonna thin that black down a little bit and blend that black into the blue to create a fade between the two colors. And once all that's done, now it's just a matter of going back through the frill section and picking out random scales and, you know, adding little pops of different colors throughout just to create some interesting color variations on the frill. And then the last thing to do is paint the eyes. And for that, I'm using turquoise mixed with dead white to create a nice bright teal color. And I'll add a big black dot along with a white light catch and then varnish it up with some gloss top coat. And with all of that done, this wild guy is ready to rock and roll. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it has inspired you in some way, shape, or form. And if you give this one a shot, or any repaint for that matter, remember to tag me over on Instagram in your photo so I can share it in my story. If you need more Jurassic related content, you know where to find it. Links will be in the description box below. You guys take care and I'll see you around the compound.